Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now maybe you've heard the term CPU scaling or maybe CPU frequency scaling or even dynamic voltage and frequency scaling and you've wondered what they mean. Well today I'm going to try and explain. So if you're ready, let's go. One of the key characteristics of mobile computing and maybe the most obvious characteristic is that all of our smartphones and tablets and laptops run from a battery. Desktops and servers run from the mains and therefore they don't have power worries. They can just draw as much power as they need. But smartphones in particular have a battery and the more power they draw, the quicker that battery will drain. Now it turns out that there's a direct correlation between the frequency, the clock frequency of a CPU, 1 gigahertz, 1.5 gigahertz, 2 gigahertz, and the amount of power that it needs. And that's because there are all these transistors inside of the chip and every time they have to switch that uses air power and therefore if you switch them less frequency then there's less power used. You could think about it maybe like the revs of the engine in your car. The more you rev your engine the more petrol, the more gas will be used. Now, when you're using your smartphone, maybe you're reading a web page, for example, while you're actually reading the text, this phone is doing very, very little. So it doesn't need to be running at two gigahertz just to keep displaying that web page to you. So actually there's a system that's inside the Linux kernel and inside Android that allows the frequency to be scaled, to be changed automatically when the CPU isn't very busy. And so this is called CPU scaling. And when the CPU sees it's got nothing to do, it's in the idle mode, then it works and it needs to slow down the CPU. In fact, there's also a state where it can switch off a core or switch off a couple of cores, but that's a different subject than today. Now, of course, once you then start to use your web uh, application again, or you start to play a game, or you start to do something else, then of course the CPU frequency needs to go back up again. So this scaling works in both directions. And it actually also turns out that when you're running the CPU at a lower clock frequency, you actually don't need as many volts to power that chip. So you can actually alter the volt at the same time in tandem with the clock frequency. And that's where we get the term dynamic voltage and frequency scaling, DVFS, because both the volt and the clock frequency are changed at the same time. Now controlling this is a thing called the governor, the CPU scaling governor. And on Android it's set in the mode interactive. And it's the interactive mode because it has a little trick inside of it. And that is as soon as you touch the screen, then the CPU is ramped up instantly to give the user that fast feedback to a UI interaction. Now if you want to see this CPU frequency scaling in action, you can download an app like CPU-Z or CPU-Z, depending on how you pronounce it. Now inside that app, there's information about your make of your CPU and the model number and the number of cores. And there's also a section which talks about the clock frequencies. And the way the clock frequencies change inside the app are actually dynamic. You can see maybe some of them are stopped, some of them are running at 300 megahertz. And then if you do something like scroll the app up and down, you'll see that it jumps up to a higher frequency. In fact, if you see running at a low frequency, let's say 300 megahertz, if you just touch the screen, you'll see it quickly jump up because this is the interactive governor working in anticipation of some UI interaction with the user. Now, it's also possible to change the governor on an uh, Android, but to do that, you need to have a rooted phone. And there are several apps in the App Store that allow you to change it. And there are some stories that if you change it you get better performance and maybe different battery life and so on and some of it's true and some of it's also a load of misinformation. You have to remember this one thing that smartphone manufacturers spend millions and millions of dollars designing and building and selling these smartphones and you would think that if they knew there was a better governor out there they would change it to give to use that new governor. In fact the interactive governor is the best governor for Android. Otherwise, as I said, they would all be changing to the other one or even writing their own, which has been known in the past, but that's a whole another story, not for now. Now, if you're a developer, I just wanted to point out that this change from a low frequency state to a high frequency state can take around 20 milliseconds. So if you're doing some system profiling and you see that you have a dropped frame at maybe the beginning of a particular segment in your program, that is probably likely due to the fact that the CPU has to ramp up from a low frequency state to a high frequency state. So there's nothing much you can really do about it, but now you know why it's happening. Now, of course, there is more going on inside your CPU than just 
DVFS. One of the big changes that we've seen last year and that will continue this year in many, many phones is the use of heterogeneous multi-processing or big dot little from ARM. And that's what we find in these octa-core phones where you have maybe four Cortex-A72 cores and four Cortex-A53 cores. And what happens is when the phone gets busy, it switches from using the lower performance A53 cores, but they have a higher energy efficiency, and it starts using the more power hungry but faster cortex a72 cores now if the dynamic voltage and frequency scaling is like revving the engine in your car then this is like changing gear you change from one to the other now the original implementations of big dot little the software component of big dot little used the dvfs system to switch from one core to the other when it got to a certain limit it would say well this core can't cope with this anymore let's switch over to a higher power core now that's still actually one of the basic principles but now the whole thing is actually a load more complicated because the scheduler takes into account not only what's going on but it takes into account maybe the temperature of this of the cpu so it knows uh, whether it can reach a certain level or not because it, otherwise there's overheating and armor actually working on an energy aware scheduler for Linux for Android which will actually mean that maybe rather than putting it on a, a non-active core which maybe would be the best choice in terms of performance it might actually put a task onto an already running core because actually that's more energy efficient because it's an energy aware scheduler rather than starting up a whole new core and ramping it up and start using energy for that but that's uh, coming out in this year 2016 and we'll start seeing that in phones maybe towards the end of the year that isn't there yet so as you can see there's lots going on inside of the processor to make sure it uses the optimum amount of battery the optimum amount of power but yet delivers you the best level of performance my name is gary sims from android authority and i hope you really enjoyed this video if you did please don't forget to give it a thumbs up also don't forget to use the comments below to tell me what you think about dvfs what you think about heterogeneous multiprocessing what you think about big dot little what you think about energy aware scheduling what you think about any of the technologies that are being used inside of your processor in your smartphone to make sure that it gives you the best performance yet with the best battery life also don't forget to subscribe to android authority's youtube channel also you can follow me on social media and as for me I'll see you in my next video.